Inside the hall, it was now quite dark. Bjorn clapped his hands and in trotted four beautiful white ponies and several large, long-bodied gray dogs. Bjorn said something to them in a queer language like animal noises turned into talk. They went out again and soon came back carrying torches in their mouths, which they lit at the fire and stuck in low brackets on the pillars of the hall about the central hearth. The dogs could stand on their hind legs when they wished and carry things with their forefeet. Quickly, they got out boards and trestles from the side walls and set them up near the fire. Then, ba 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 was heard, and in came some snow-white sheep led by a large coal-black ram. One bore a white cloth embroidered at the edges with figures of animals. Others bore on their broad backs trays with bowls and platters and knives and wooden spoons, which the dogs took and quickly laid on the trestle tables. These were very low, low enough even for Bilbo to sit at comfortably. Beside them, a pony pushed two low-seated benches with wide rush bottoms and little short, thick legs for Gandalf and Thorin while at the far end he put Bjorn's big black chair of the same sort, in which he sat with his great legs stuck out under the table. These were all the chairs he had in his hall, and he probably had them low like the tables for the convenience of the wonderful animals that waited on him. Where did the rest sit on? What did the rest sit on? They were not forgotten. The other ponies came in rolling round drum-shaped uh, uh, sections of the log, smooth and polished, and low enough for, even for Bilbo. So soon they were all seated at Bjorn's table, and the hall had not seen such a gathering for many a year. There they had a supper, or a dinner, such as they had not had since they left the last homely house in the west and said goodbye to Elrond. The light of the torches and the fire flickered about them, and on the table were two tall red beeswax candles. All the time they ate, Bjorn in his deep rolling voice told tales of the wild lands on this side of the mountains, and especially of the dark and dangerous wood that lay outstretched far to the north and south, a day's ride before them. Barring their way to the east, the terrible forest of Mirkwood. The dwarves listened and shook their beards, for they knew that they must soon venture into that forest, and, af and that, after the mountains, it was the worst of the perils they had to pass before they came to the dragon's stronghold. When dinner was over, they began to tell tales of their own, but Bjorn seemed to be growing drowsy and paid little heed to them. They spoke most of gold and silver and jewels and the making of things by smithcraft, and Bjorn did not appear to care for such things. There were no things of gold or silver in his hall, and few save the knives that were made of metal at all. They sat long at the table with their wooden drinking bowls filled with mead. The dark night came on outside. The fires in the middle of the hall were built with fresh logs, and the torches were put out. And still they sat in the light of the dancing flames with the pillars of the house standing tall behind them and dark at the top like trees of the forest. Whether it was magic or not, it seemed to Bilbo that he heard a sound like wind in the branches stirring in the rafters and the hoot of owls. Soon he began to nod with sleep and the voices seemed to grow far away until he woke with a start. <clears throat> The great door had creaked and slammed. Bjorn was gone. The dwarves were sitting cross-legged on the floor round the fire, and presently they began to sing. Some of the verses were like this, but there were many more, and their singing went on for a long while. The wind was on the withered heath, but in the forest early, their shadows lay by night and day, and dark things silent crept beneath. The wind came.
came down from mountains cold, and like a tide it roared and rolled. The branches groaned, the forest moaned, and leaves were laid upon the mold. The wind went on from west to east, all movement in the forest ceased, but shrill and harsh across the marsh, its whistling voices were Grasses hissed, their tassels bent, the reeds were rattling on it went, or shaken pool under the heavens cool, were racing clouds were torn and red. Past the lonely mountain bed and swept above the dragon's lair. There, black and dark, lay bold as stark, and flying smoke was in the it left the world and took its flight over the wide seas of the night. The moon set sail upon the gale, and stars were fanned to leaping light. Bilbo began to nod again. Suddenly, up stood Gandalf. It is time for us to sleep, he said. For us, but not, I think, for Bjorn. In this hall we can rest sound and safe, but I warn you all not to forget what Bjorn said before he left us. You must not stray outside until the sun is up on your pillow. Peril. Bilbo found that beds had already been laid at the side of the hall, on a sort of raised platform between the pillars and the outer, outer wall. For him, there was a little mattress of straw and woolen blankets. He snuggled into them very gladly, summertime though it was. The fire burned low, and he fell asleep. Yet in the night he woke, and the fire had sunk to a few embers. The dwarves and Gandalf were all asleep, to judge by their breathing. A splash of white on the floor came from the high moon, which was peering down through the smoke hole in the roof. There was a growling sound outside and a noise as of some great animal scuffling at the door. Bilbo wondered what it was, and whether it could be Bjorn in enchanted shape, and if he had come in as a bear and killed them. He dived under the blankets and hid his head, and fell asleep again, at last, in spite of his fears.